Hey guys, it's Alex over at Laser Everything, and in this next section of videos for the ultimate guide to laser processing, we're going to be covering how to figure out what kind of laser source you're working with. And to keep things simple, we're going to do separate videos for fiber, UV, CO2 RF tubes, CO2 glass tubes, and diode laser modules. This means that we're going to be opening up our lasers in most cases to try to ascertain this information, and I just want to remind you before we get started. I'm not an electrical expert and if you're uncomfortable or unsure about what you're doing when opening up your machines, make sure to consult an electrical expert before doing so so that you can stay safe as there are inherent risks to digging around inside of your machines where you don't belong. Furthermore, this is very likely going to void your warranty in most cases, so just be prepared for that eventuality if you decide to go digging for this information on your own. Before going nuclear, you can always try to reach out to your manufacturer to see if you can get a straight answer about the type of source and its specs before moving on with this section of tutorials. Oftentimes, they'll happily share that information with you, and if you can get it with them and you trust your manufacturer is being accurate with that information, then that is a preferable way to go about this. That said, let's cut the sticker and dive into CO2 glass tubes. So, CO2 glass tubes, they're probably one of the easiest sources in this mini-series to identify, and that's good, because it's the one you're going to have to replace the most often. A lot of times, lower-end tubes can last as little as one to two years, even less if you're not taking good care of them. And while there are some that can last a long time, quite a few are going to burn out. And I think replacing a CO2 glass laser tube is something you're going to have to do at some point in your process of owning a CO2 laser. A huge part of that is going to be identifying what kind of laser source you have now so that when you go to replace it you have a decent idea of what you're after to replicate the production that you were running before things went bad. The good news here is that glass tubes are very easy to identify. On a rare occasion you'll see a glass tube inside a Galvo laser system usually for industrial or large commercial setups and you're always going to find that glass tube inside the laser path area. But for the vast majority of users and the vast majority of you watching this video, you have a glass CO2 laser tube inside of a gantry machine. And that means your glass tube is typically going to be found at the rear. In almost every single device I've ever owned that uses a glass CO2 laser tube, there is a giant door in the back which is very easily opened and exposes the tube for you to inspect or change out in the future if needed. You'll want to make sure that the machine is at the very least off, though it would be better if it was unplugged while you were inspecting the tube. CO2 glass tubes very often run on extremely high voltages and you have to be obsessively careful when working around it and manipulating it because it can be extremely dangerous to come in contact with these in the wrong place at the wrong time. Once you've found your laser tube, it's as easy as looking at the giant sticker. They're really hard to miss. It's practically shouting, hey, read me. So let's take a look at some examples and see what kind of tubes we've got hanging around the shop. Let's start with an easy one here. Here here is the glass tube from my Mira 9. This is a Reci laser tube and you can see it is the model W4 and it's got a peak power output of 117 watts. The agreement power or the average output power is 100 watts and this is your working power. This is what you should be expected to get and use. And we've also got a little bit more information here like the date of production and some websites where you can get more information about your source. So this is great. Reci tubes are super easy to identify and they're one of the best tubes on the market. The next tube we can take a look at is the laser tube inside my Ohmtech 2820. This is a tube that I installed myself after the original one went bad. Let's take a look at the product model. This is a Reci W2. It's got a peak power of 102 watts and an agreement power or average power of 90 watts. And again, we've got the production date. Like I said, for the first one, Reci tubes, super easy to identify every time. At a glance, this one can seem a bit more difficult to ascertain the manufacturer, but if you have been looking at tubes long enough, you'll recognize these logos up here as ECO2 and JK Laser. 
The rest of the sticker is fairly straightforward with a model number. This is the HLC60B, so we can assume that's a 60 watt tube, and we can see down below that that's true, and a max power or a peak output power of 75 watts. Once again, we also have the manufacture date and a stamp from ECO2, so we have a fairly good understanding of what's in this machine. The last example is probably the most difficult to figure out here, and that's because this is a white label label laser tube. This laser tube was manufactured by some company, sold to Monport, and then Monport threw a Monport sticker on it. Now, we do have the product number, JK0415, and we do get our peak power, 70 watts, and our agreement power, 65 watts. So we do have some useful information about this tube, but I'd love to know where it was made. Unfortunately, that may not be an option for you. I'm sure that I could find the manufacturer of this tube if I looked really hard, but I don't really have time for that and you don't either. The important thing is that we have our lasers wattage and that is going to make a huge difference when setting up our CO2 laser. We've taken a look at a lot of different kinds of labels and I think you can see it's fairly straightforward figuring out what kind of laser tube you have. They're very simple laser sources. There's not a lot to them and so there's not a lot of information we have to gather from them in order to use them well. For now though you've got your source information so what do you do with it? Well of course you can always Google search things, but I'd also recommend heading over to makearmy.io where you can see our laser source database. And if we go ahead and give that a click, you'll see a ton of different laser sources listed here with more information about them. Let's see if we can find one of those recce tubes in the list. Here is the W4, and if we give that a click, we can check out some details about our laser tube. We've got a make and model here. We can see our laser wattage, our wavelength. And again, guys, a lot of this stuff is gonna be missing like pulse width, or pulse repetition rate, and that's because CO2 glass tubes are almost always continuous wave lasers, so a huge amount of the stats that are normally covered for a laser source simply aren't details that you're going to find in this kind of documentation. Though we can find things like operating voltage, storage temperatures, and dimensions if we need those things for planning how to fit a new laser tube into an existing system, or other situations like that. And again, you can find this at makearmy.io under the laser source database to get all the information you need to set your laser up properly inside of Lightburn once we get to that point. So this is something you're going to want to bookmark because we're going to come back to this page over and over again. If for some reason you can't find your source in this database or your source is missing information, feel free to reach out to me and let me know. We can get it added if you do have the data for it. If you don't, I'm sure we can find somebody that has a similar source in the community. Hit us up over at Discord or at masters.lasereverything.net if you want to support the channel and we can help you discover the accurate details about your laser source so you can get your machine set up properly. That's all for now. There's a lot more to discuss as far as what's going on inside of this machine, but we're going to save that for a little later on in the guide when we do our basic laser anatomy video. So if you're curious about what everything inside of this case does, hang on. That video should be coming at you in at most a month or two when we get a little bit further along in the course and we've got our machine operational. So we'll swing back around to that later. For now though, guys, I think that's it. That should be everything you need in order to get the basic information about your laser source that we're going to need when we move on to installing and configuring Lightburn. I hope you found that helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.